Okay, folks, uh, this is uh, part two on uh, how I do my uh, flight planning to uh, Oshkosh. Uh, now, uh, you'll recall on uh, part one, I uh, ended up stating something about getting my camera ready and taking a screenshot of it. Uh, however, I found some software that I uh, could use now where uh, I'm basically uh, showing you exactly what's on my screen by utilizing uh, this software. Uh, I knew there was something available out there, but uh, I didn't want to go out there and spend lots of money and getting another program stuck in the computer. But this one is um, free as long as uh, I comply with certain restrictions. And it's not the upgraded aspect of it. It's it's the smaller, it's the, um, the freebie one anyway. So that's what I've got installed in here. And it's actually not a bad system at all. Uh, um, it took me about a half hour to learn it. and. Uh, I think I've got it down, so uh, I was having a problem with the sound aspect of it here, So, uh, uh, and that was basically my mistake. I had a uh, problem with the uh, microphone. Um, also, uh, I mentioned something about uh, my aircraft having something to do with the instrumentation. Uh, and the instrumentation I have for my uh, engine monitoring and my fuel flow are uh, EI instruments. I think I said JP. I don't know where I got that from, but it's uh, Electronics International Instruments. I've got two of them. One uh, uh, basically does my cylinder head temperature, oil temperature. Uh, it's got all sorts of probes on it, and it's a heck of a good little investment that I've got. I've got one instrument for that, for cylinder head temperature, exhaust gas temperature, oil temperature, and uh, I don't know if it's got the outside air temperature in there or not, but it's got uh, the bar graph is on there, and it's uh, it was right well within the limits of uh, what that engine that I have installed in the aircraft uh, it's uh, right up there the way it's supposed to be and also I've got a fuel flow indicator uh, and um, it's uh, it shows me fuel used horsepower being utilized and all this type of stuff so anyway I thought I'd just make some corrections to that previous video there anyway now this uh, what I'm using here is the as you can see up here is the Golden Eagle flight planning and um, what I'm going to do uh, you'll notice a map in there and that just happens to be the map on the last flight plan I did but I'm just gonna go and get rid of all that and I'm gonna go on and uh, say uh, um, there now because I'm flight planning from uh, High River Alberta uh, to uh, Oshkosh I've already predetermined that the way I wanted to go is uh, via Regina uh, I could go via the US routing however uh, the first landing point in the US where I can get to would be Williston uh, which is uh, one of those uh, customs regulated airports that you have to go to for your first entry into the United States uh, for customs and uh, it's uh, it's it's doable but uh, unfortunately I uh, don't want to take the risk I could land in Medicine Hat I guess and take it from there but I've done it before however I find now that Williston has become such a busy airport uh, these days with uh, it's like a mini Oh, how could I compare it? It's like a mini Fort McMurray of the north for uh, the U.S. Uh, with all the oil and gas exploration going on out there. It's become too much of a busy airport, so I just want to stay out of these areas. Um, and since it is a, an airport of entry, uh, I, I would rather find one a little bit closer to the border. So uh, what I've done, and I've flown this route uh, for uh, the last uh, couple of years. I, I've flown it twice, actually, uh, and, and have done it this way with my airplane, uh, other than the fact that I haven't been to Oshkosh for the last three or four years. Uh, this is the route I've normally picked. Now, you'll notice on this, right up here, it has a terrain map. Uh, I mentioned to you, I think previously, that I do not subscribe to the, or I did not subscribe to the uh, low-level charts or the... Uh, uh, the re, uh, re, uh, the sectional charts uh, uh, because I feel this is adequate. It's got all the VOR um, VORs in it, and it also has all the uh, TFRs, uh, restricted areas, and so forth uh, on the uh, uh, this uh, terrain map out here. Uh, you can, like, as you'll notice here, it has terrain, uh, and then you can go light brown. Then you got the sectional uh, chart that you can uh, subscribe to. Uh, WAC chart, uh, TAC chart, low on route, high on route, which obviously uh, with light aircraft you won't need, uh, and uh, various ones. And some of these you have to subscribe to, so I, I don't. Um, now, also, the next thing over here is level four. I've got it set on level four. Now, that gives you basically what, what, uh, 
what your distance uh, is going to be between point A and point B. So, of course, the longer distance you've got, the lower level you want to set this at. Now, you'll notice if I set it at level 1, uh, what happens there? You get the whole North American chart. And if you set it to level 2, it'll decrease and level 3 and so on. So, and if you go right up to level 8, well, this is what happens. You get a line. So you're somewhere down there, and you can move it around by taking the little hand out there and moving the map around like this. And you'll notice you just follow that red line until you get back to where you want to be. And, of course, it takes time for the program to catch up, so that's why this is black right now. Anyway, uh, we won't worry about that. We'll just keep it on level 5 out here. And uh, that just about does it. Level 4 is actually a little bit better. There you are. So there's level 4. Now, you'll notice I've got waypoints in here. Um, there are waypoints out here uh, that um, I've built myself. Uh, this is uh, Brooks, which is actually an airport uh, just east of us out here, which is an actual airport. Uh, and then these out here, and I'm going to zoom in on those, and we'll make those, uh, say, level 7 out here so that we can actually, there you are. So you'll see Suff, well, I can actually do it one better out here. Let's go to 8 there. You'll see Suff NW, and then the red line goes all the way to Suff NE. Now, below this area, all the way to Medicine Hat, go back to 4, all the way to Medicine Hat, which is down here, this whole area in here, right below this line of my uh, track here, is restricted, well, it's, restri yeah, it's restricted airspace. It's, uh, it's active sometimes, sometimes it's not, but the bottom line is you want to stay out of that because a lot of military activity goes on in here, and it's uh, more surface stuff, but they do a lot of shooting up and you don't want to be shot uh, basically as tanks and whatnot that go through. It's a very rugged area, and uh, it's known as Suffield. And there's two zones to it. I think there's one below here, and then there's another one above it. One is active. The other one may not be active, but I just stay out of it. So basically, that's why you see me going up a little bit. It's a little bit out of the way, but uh, I'd rather be safe than sorry. And you never know when it becomes active. You basically have to check with air traffic control to see if it is active. And then if it is, well then you're screwed anyway. you got to go the northern uh, area. And that's why I've got these waypoints in here. And the nice thing about it, this is a five-letter letter designator that I've got it. So SUF NW stands for Suffield Northwest. So it's the northwest corner of the Suffield area and the uh, SUF NE, which is the northeast corner of the Suffield range. From there it goes uh, to an airport right here, and um, which I'll uh, just zoom in as well, see if I can find it again. Well, let's try it again. It uh, You kind of lose it sometimes. There we go. Okay. It's this place right here. Now, that is uh, Capri in uh, Saskatchewan. And uh, so I've hooked them into it as well because I'm going right overhead that airport. And then over here, I've got XV300, which uh, in my thinking is Cross Victor 300. Now, since Cross Victor 300 isn't anything on your, uh, in your GPS, I've given it that waypoint name. So when I get to that place, I know that I'm on Crossing Victor 300, which is a radial from the um, uh, Lumsden, I think it's Lumsden uh, VOR, and it goes all the way to the... Uh, let me just pull this up a little bit better, 7 here. Yeah, there's Lumsden VR. There's Victor 300. And where it crosses, where my track crosses Victor 300, I put the XV300. And I use that as a waypoint in my computer. So I put XV300, give it the coordinates in my computer. And you'll notice that's the same one that goes all the way swift current. So if you can pick up both VORs at that point, depending on your altitude, uh, and you set, uh, you know, you got your cross bearing and whatnot on it, uh, it'll give you a pretty accurate indication where you are. Also, you have to watch this area down here. This is a Moose Jaw uh, uh, Air Force Base. That's where the snowbirds do their a lot of their uh, training out of, and uh, and there's a lot of military activity goes on out there at times. So I try to stay away from that. And then you get into Regina, which is a Mode C uh, requirement for uh, transponder. Mode C is required going into Regina. Okay, so you've got that. Now, if we look at the, um, the, uh, the the rest of it out here, you'll notice up here 
on the top it says wins okay and TFR is okay so what the system has already done it has downloaded the wins based on what you need and usually in well in my case it's just low level wins so it will take the low level wins for this whole area and apply that to your flight plan the winds are downloaded it says okay and also the TFRs are also okay so they've already loaded them that's the ones that are right now are in effect okay now you want to see your flight plan okay so what you do is you click on report okay and then it says you want the flight log uh, so you go in the flight log you click flight log and there it is there is the high river to Regina flight plan and it's in a very nice format it also gives you your altitude that you've preset it for that's what you want to fly it's an eastbound altitude and your VFR so it's seven it's odd plus 500 so it's 7500 it gives you your course right here your magnetic course and you'll notice these winds here are missing so they don't put them down it just basically says okay well those winds are missing so you'll get a zero wind component in here so uh, uh, in this particular case uh, my flight plan is set so that my cruise speed is set at 103 so that's why this is 103 out here and uh, also uh, my climb speed is set at 75 knots as well so that's why it's standard and it'll come with a no wind speed now in a lot of cases what I'll do is I'll, I'll base it on a no wind uh, flight plan and the reason why I do that is because I do this stuff so much ahead of time that uh, I will apply the winds to it myself by just checking what the upper winds will be uh, because I'll do the flight plans coming back from Oshkosh or wherever I'm coming from as well and sometimes you don't have the uh, the uh, luxury of having this uh, program available to you uh, where you happen to be so uh, I just make out a bunch of flight plans on the ones I want I make copies of them and then I just apply the correction to whatever my ground speed will be based on the winds. Uh, just to go over the flight plan out here, you'll notice there's all your waypoints. It even gives you a top of climb based on whatever parameters you put into the system for the uh, flight planning uh, for your aircraft. Your first waypoint, which is Brooks, then that's Suffield Northwest. That's my waypoint that I built and they are built on these parameters here your latitude and longitude which I also put into my computer uh, I'm sorry this one down here 50 north 45 uh, minutes uh, no seconds and then west 111 five minutes and so forth anyway uh, and then Suffield Northeast and I've, I've programmed those into my GPS as well uh, this is uh, Cabri Saskatchewan and that's the uh, code for Saskatchewan and the coordinates and they are on and they will be in the GPS then the cross vector 300 similar to what I've done to Suffield Northwest here that's Suff Nor uh, NW and Suff NE and I always put the X meaning crossing vector 300 and put the coordinates on it now there's an easy way of doing this by finding out exactly where you are and that's by basically saying uh, to the system okay uh, what is Victor 300 uh, let's say it happens to be uh, the uh, 210 uh, radial from the Lumsden VOR just say okay where is that in relationship to so many DME from that or so many nautical miles from that particular um, VOR and it'll come out and give you the exact location um, or uh, the exact um, coordinates and then your start of descent is based on um, from 7,500 feet, 500 feet a minute descent to 1,000 feet above circuit altitude in Regina. So, uh, and I know a lot of the newer uh, apps that they have on uh, the uh, flight planning systems uh, now uh, that you even have on your airplane uh, will actually tell you to start descending at 500 feet a minute uh, to get to 1,000 feet. Now, of course, at that point in time, you're already talking to Regina, and they'll probably tell you when to start coming down. Anyway, uh, based on all of that, uh, that's it. Uh, so it's direct, direct uh, to those waypoints. Altitude 7,500 feet, your magnetic uh, course right here, uh, your winds. This out here, what you see is a uh, thing that pops in uh, where you want to do uh, the printing and so forth. So just ignore that. Uh, so that's a no wind scenario right there because it didn't pick it up. There's your winds here, 249 degrees at two knots. So basically a little bit of a, a tailwind. And here again, and, and which will reflect here you'll notice here it's 105 
not so it's basically 180 degrees or uh, rather um, uh, yeah um, <laughs> it's it's a tailwind basically what I'm trying to say added to your uh, what you've got your flight plan uh, cruise speed set for so in this particular case I got a two knot tailwind this one the 249 at four I've got about a three knot tailwind and so on so a little bit of a tailwind so not, not much help there at all uh, then it will tell you the fuel requirements uh, to um, to get to uh, your top of climb it's uh, three minutes right here and then it tells you uh, your fuel remaining 26 gallons or uh, of the of the fuel that's required uh, is uh, is is required is 26 uh, the way it reads out here is three minutes three gallons is gone to get to top of climb then after that point you need 26 gallons to get for the remainder of it that doesn't mean that you don't have more fuel on board because you got 45 gallons of fuel on board so it basically tells you that's what you need for your next leg um, then uh, or for your for the continuation of the flight plan on here you'll burn 4.5 gallons okay that'll uh, get you another 32 uh, minutes uh, further out and then so on all the way down the road and I'm sure you guys all know how this all works out here it's on a decreasing fact or decreasing uh, until you get down to zero and then basically it adds it all up and it tells you the total fuel that you uh, need is 31.4 gallons and you're going to have 18.6 gallons left when you get there so you got lots of reserve fuel in this particular flight plan the distances it's 18.7 to get to top of climb you got another 332.2 nautical miles to go and then it decreases 54.2 from that gives you this 32.8 from that gives you this and so on uh, you might be a point something out sometimes that happens and it just depends how it rounds it out uh, remaining time okay you got 15 minutes for top of climb to top of climb you got three hours and nine minutes remaining then the th next one is uh, to Brooks it's 32 minutes and you got two hours and 38 minutes left and so on all the way down the line until you get down to this point right here where it's 11 minutes from your start of descent to Regina and uh, you've got no time left total time on the flight plan from takeoff to landing three hours and 24 minutes and a total nautical distance of 351 nautical miles so that's the basically the way the the flight plan is now I, I like this uh, this is a nice thing and then what I do is I print this and um, you can make them smaller so you can put uh, sometimes up to four flight plans on a sheet because you put two on one side and two on the other side of the sheet so being a cheapskate that I am I try to do it that way sometimes I can't get away with it so I have to put one on each side so I only got two now the next thing is your ATC flight plan so you come over here and you'll click on flight plan so there's the flight plan again this is all based on pre input data okay and uh, you will find this is an FAA flight plan so it really doesn't help you too much for the uh, for the ICAO one but uh, you can convert this to an ICAO one um, on uh, the system as well because now it's all ICAO format uh, except in the states sometimes it's not really a requirement but this will give you some idea flight plan basically all the gray area you'll leave alone it's a VFR flight plan there's my registration that's the uh, aircraft type and the uh, special equipment coding which is uh, to do with the uh, the type of aircraft and the uh, GPS that I've got on board the two airspeed in knots 103 knots and the departure point which is the <coughs> 157 degree radial from the Calgary VOR 34 nautical miles that's what that means out here so it's the Calgary VOR it's the 157 radial and if you go down that 157 radial by 34 nautical miles you'll hit High River Airport now I don't know why it does not show High River Airport because High River Airport is CEN4 now for some reason it doesn't pick it up the proposed departure time I've always got it set for from the time I did it plus 60 minutes now you can set it up for whatever time you want in there and then you can put the actual time in and the cruising altitude and so forth is picked up off your flight plan as well the route of flight again uh, we do go over Brooks and for some reason it picks that one up I don't know why it doesn't pick up the departure airport uh, I don't know this one out here gives you again the coordinates from the this particular case it's from the medicine at VOR which is 330 degree radial at 48 nautical miles 
that's one of the uh, positions. Then the Empress one, it'll pick up the Empress one, which is 212 degrees, 15 nautical miles, the Enderby, uh, or, yeah, and so on, Lumsden one, and so forth. But anyway, so you can see 245 degree, 46 nautical miles. Now, it does not pick up those waypoints that I put on myself because those aren't recognized waypoints. This is an actual point that the computer will figure out uh, as a waypoint and it, it does this automatically so that is exactly somewhere on your track somewhere but not pertaining to the flight plan uh, that uh, I've it's pertaining to the flight plan but it's somewhere else on your track your destination of course is CYQR which is Regina the uh, hours three hours and 24 minutes and based on my fuel on board I've got five hours and 52 minutes now that's a little bit on the high side I think uh, um, I've based it on, uh, if you base it on 8.4 gallons an hour and uh, 50 gallons at 8.4 will give you this close to it. And then, of course, your name and so forth. Anyway, uh, the um, color of the aircraft is white, blue, and gold, are the predominant colors. And then, you know, you've got all this sort of stuff coming up out here. And then now you can print that. Now you can also do a weight and balance. Now the weight and balance, I don't, I don't use this. Uh, I've got another app that does that, uh, and it's, uh, I find it's a little bit more convenient. So, but you can program your app into this. Okay, now let's go to another flight. You've got this thing. It's going to take you that long. Uh, you already know how it all. We went through this one out here, but now let me just go th to one more, and uh, we'll, um, we'll see how this works out. So now we're in Regina. Now I take. My flight plan, fill it all in, did all ever calculate my fuels, make sure that uh, the fuel that I'm going to put on board the airplane uh, is similar to what the flight plan uh, was calling for, and uh, then uh, I can sort of pre-program my uh, um, uh, EI instrument uh, to show what I've actually burnt, and it'll sort of, I don't know, it does has some internal workings on it where it, it gets it closer and closer to your actual fuel burn. Anyway. Uh, let's go uh, to the uh, next one out here. Okay, so we go into file, and I've already got this done, guys, because it's going to take quite long to do all of this. But now we want to go to an airport that I love going to, okay, in the States. First of all, it's a point of entry. And this point of entry is in Piney, Piney Pine Creek, I think it's called, okay? So, and it's very convenient for uh, border goers um, that are coming from this from the west actually uh, and want to cross into the US first of all it is a very underused airport it has a, I think it's about a 3,000 foot strip I can check it out but anyway you guys can check it out uh, and half of it is in Canada in other words the 49th parallel cuts right through the runway so half of it's in Canada the other half is in the States you can clear both Canadian customs coming northbound and you can clear US customs going southbound the reason why you can do that is because, well, 50% is in Canada, the other 50% is in the States. The other nice thing about it, uh, it does have, uh, it's, it's a border crossing, which is uh, the, the chaps that clear you out there are the same guys that clear the cars coming on the road that's almost right beside it. And uh, they have fuel there. It's done by a credit card. Uh, you know, you stick the old credit card in, it's 24 hours. The only thing being, of course, if you happen to go there, uh, and let's say you uh, go into there and there's nobody there, okay, well, then you better stay on the U.S. side if you're going into Canada. You better stay on the U.S. side and vice versa. If you're going into the States, uh, you better stay on the Canadian side until they open. And I believe they open up at 9 o'clock in the morning. They, they do have a time slot. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> anyway, um, Again, we've got the same thing here. This is a flight plan that I've created. Uh, now, most of them have uh, airports en route out here, uh, as you can see. There's only one out here because I wanted another waypoint in here, and that's crossing Victor 181, uh, which is probably uh, uh, Victor 181, which is from the Humboldt uh, VOR here, just so the track here. What we're going to do is, again, we're going to go to the reports, okay? Go to flight log, <coughs> and you'll notice... There it is, Regina. First airport is Kipling. Next one is Verdon. You got Glenboro, Manitoba, Somerset, and there's the Cross Victor 181. Then you get your start of the descent, and there's Piney Pine Creek border crossing. 
okay you'll notice the time very nice similar to what we had going to Regina from I River three hours and 19 minutes 348 miles nautical miles and the fuel is 30.2 so there's only one place you got to fill up in Canada and that's Regina and the fuel is expensive there guys I uh, uh, you know that's typical out here our fuel is expensive so if you want to go via the States uh, yeah go to Williston and pick up there but I just find it more convenient for myself to stay on the Canadian side of the border. You, it's just one fill, fill up, and uh, if you do get weathered in while you're, well, you're not going to get stuck in Williston because I can tell you right now you won't get a hotel room there. Um, the other end of it is uh, basically now you're going from, uh, so you've got this but done, this part done, so that's, uh, say, three and a half hours, three and a half hours. So for my airplane, at seven hours, you're here. Now from this point, you've got options. Uh, it's about another four hours to get you down to Oshkosh, which is down, um, yum, yum, where is it? Yeah, right here. So basically from here down down to here, just below Green Bay, Oshkosh is right here where my little hand is, and we're right up here. So that's about another four hours flying. And um, there is a military area out here. It's an MOA, and I stay away from that. And you can also see these TFRs here. See these TFRs? They're all showing up. And they, they, they change day by day, depending where the where the activity is. So anyway, uh, then on to Oshkosh. Uh, now into Oshkosh, you have to be careful of the the MOAs out here. Most of the time that you go in there, most of these, like the Volk ones, they'll, uh, they'll be inactive. But you, I usually make it so that I have to fly my way around it. Uh, what I normally do is when I get down to um, uh, uh, Piney, I fly either to Bemidji, stay overnight in Bemidji, or I go to Russo, which is right here, depending how tired I am, and uh, and I just stay overnight there. Um, Russo is not bad, except it's quite a ways from town. I believe they have some vehicles out there that you can use. Last time we were there, we had to walk, and it started raining and whatnot, but um, we did get a drive back to the airport. I'm thinking of taking my bike this time. I'm going to get a little fold-up bike. Anyway, guys, there you are. This is the way I do it, uh, going to Oshkosh. Uh, I hope this uh, this uh, helps you guys out. Uh, I just want to sort of have a little caveat on this. Uh, I am no way associated with this Golden Eagle flight prep. Uh, I find it a very convenient uh, way of doing things uh, for myself. Uh, I'm not an expert at this by any means uh, on this program. I had a different program before, which I was very happy with. Unfortunately, for some reason, they don't seem to have any updates anymore. And if they do, it's an arm and a leg, so I've stayed away from them and uh, don't seem to be getting any replies to my emails. Anyway, these people are always updating. Uh, they're always sending me updates on this, uh, and it's uh, free. Uh, so I think they're doing a super-duper job. Um, I've heard some pros and cons, but uh, anyway, like I said, I like it. And uh, if you guys like it, there you go. You can uh, use it. Uh, whatever I've told you, I have no idea if it's right or wrong. Uh, I, I've used it, so it must, <laughs> in my view, it must be right. So anyway, there you go, folks. Uh, that's the way I do my flight planning to Oshkosh. And uh, I hope at some point in time, uh, you know, uh, I can uh, um, be of more of assistance to you in, in this um, flight planning aspect of it um, with other trips. I've been possibly doing, uh, thinking about doing a trip down to Florida from Calgary, but that's a long way. And for me, I... I can actually step on an airplane uh, at the airport here in Calgary and get down to Florida a lot faster than I can flying my own little bird down. But it is a lot more fun flying the old, uh, my old bird down. Anyway, um, anyway, that's it, guys. Uh, that's about all. i just babbling on too much out here. Uh, so uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, anyway, if you like uh, my, uh, my little uh, tutorial out here, um, uh, there's more on YouTube. Uh, tag along with Chet. And uh, if... Uh, if you like it, subscribe and uh, enjoy. So take care. Bye now.